Hello and welcome to March's Craft Gin Club What's in the Box Review 2020. Now, as you all know, last month I reviewed the February box, which was the Valentine's edition. Um, this month's um, Gin of the Month appears to be sort of themed around the Mother's Day come um, sort of spring kind of theme. Um, it's literally just arrived today. Um, it actually come outside the postal time that they said it was going to arrive. Luckily enough, I was in to receive it. So I thought I would produce this video today and um, get it uploaded straight away. Um, hopefully it doesn't spoil it if you haven't got the box, if you have got the box already. Um, and enjoy. So here we go. First off. We have some Stroop Waffles from Dalman's. Now, I believe these are from Holland. Um, there you go. Caramel in them, I believe. Is it caramel? Yeah, caramel. Um, obviously, coming from Holland, they should be quite nice. Uh, yeah, so that, that was a good start to the, to the new box. Crispies again this year. Quite an unusual flavour. We've got rosemary and sea salt. These are made in Surrey, I believe. And it's brown bag crisp. Naturally delicious. Um, again, it's not a crisp company I really know much about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, their crisps have all been good. Another good choice from Craft Gin. Um, right, moving on. Some extra goodies, we got some Lily O'Brien's Passionate About Chocolate. Chocolate Sweets. There's only four in there. Um, but yeah, they should go nicely. As I say, I think this is more of a Mother's Day kind of box um, rather than anything else. Uh, botanicals, we have grapefruit and pink peppercorn so they've certainly run the changes this month um grapefruit i can imagine is very nice it's something um i would never have considered as a botanical in a gym um but i can see the logic behind it um yeah so all in all good right that's all the goodies over with as you can see again thumbs up to craft gin club uh no nuts I'm pleased about that. However, my second pet hate is in this box. It is this. Now, I presume it's going designed to make a Bloody Mary out of the gin. Um, it's Turner and Hardy's spiced tomato mix made on the Isle of Wight. Oh, sorry, made with Isle of Wight tomatoes. Um, I'm not a particular fan of Bloody Marys. I dare say there's a lot of people are. Um, I love tomatoes as much as the next person. I like them in my salad, I like them in my sandwiches. But as a drink, not really my thing. Um, so I think we'll probably be giving this away to be quite honest. It's, um, it's a nice idea, um, however, not for me. So moving on, we have the Spring Sling Cocktail Syrup. Um, again, this is Crafting Club's own thing. Now, I had the one last month, which was for the Valentine's edition. Um, and you mixed it, uh, I think it was with like a, a tonic water, which was flavoured with rose, at, rose and I can't remember the other thing it was. Anyway, um, these are really good. Really, really good. They've surprised me. Um, they certainly um, add an edge to the drink and make it more like a cocktail in orientation. Um, so yeah, that's it. So <sighs> this is the next one. Flawsome. 
pressed wonky fruit and sparkling water. You've saved one and a half apples and a quarter of a rhubarb. Now, <clears throat> I really like this idea. There was a, a program with Hugh Fanny Whittenstall, um, must have been, I don't know, about three or four years ago. And he mentioned the fact that a lot of the big chain supermarkets um, don't buy the vegetables off of the farmers uh, um, unless they're perfect shape. Um, and the rest just get turned into the soil or thrown away because the farmers aren't allowed to sell them on to anyone else, which in my view is a complete waste of good food. Um, if a, a carrot isn't supposed to be designed to be perfectly straight, the same as, as, as all other fruit and vegetables, um, in fact, I would rather have um, fruit and vegetables that weren't the perfect shape. Um, at least you know that they've not been manufactured in some greenhouse or something, something weird like this. This to me is brilliant. Um, it's made, where is it made? Looks like it's from sort of Newport in Wales. Um, but basically it says on the can, like I said a minute ago, one and a half apples and a quarter rhubarb has been saved, which was wonky. Um, should make a lovely mixer and um, hats off to Craft Gen Club for promoting it. How much these are to buy, I don't know. Because again, <laughs> in true Craft Gen Club style, um, they don't say where you can buy them. Um, I've never seen it, but personally I think it's a fantastic idea. Staying with the theme of sustainability and um, Look, I wouldn't say looking after the planet, but certainly um, making things better. The tonic waters this month, um, let me just bring it up. Is that one? They are Busby's Premium Botanical Tonic Water Sweetened with Honey. Um, and it says sustaining the bee population of the UK. So, You've got these two, which are exactly the same. And then you've got a passion fruit one. I'm I'm really for these kind of things. Anything that protects the bees, um, that they, they are the essentially the food chain. Um, again, nice sustainable product. Um, I do all my recycling. The bottles all go in the recycling, so. We do our little bit for the environment here to try and make things better. Okay, the gin. Now, as you're aware, last month was in Wales, furthest point in Wales. Um, this month has come from the border of Wales. Um, it's sort of, by the look of it, it's... Uh, where is it? Sorry, excuse me, one second. Hereford. So it's near Hereford. And I think it's called... Oh, I can't remember the name. Wales Marsh or something, something like that. Anyway, right, so here it is. It's a limited edition elderflower, chamomile and lemon verbena. There you go. And it's from the Ludlow Gin Distillery. Um, they're a small distillery. Again which are my favourite, as you as you well know from the previous um, videos that I did. Um, they're, they're all brewed or distilled, as I should say, really, in copper um, vats, which is the correct way to do gin. Now, I, I'm guessing this has probably been um, specially made again for Craft Gin Club, but... If I give you a read of the back, then you'll understand it. It says, limited edition elderflower chamomile and lemon verbena. Handcrafted in the Welsh marches. That's it, as well as I mean, say, well, Welsh marches. Botanicals and spirit are skillfully blended in copper stills. Joy and felicity to create a smooth and classic dry gin. The finest juniper, coriander, and ang angelica root and orris are harmonised with subtle notes of chamomile, elderflower and lemon, verbena to create a truly premium gin, distilled in the Shropshire Hills Distillery. 
I'm, I'm, I'm actually reasonably excited for this. It hasn't, it's not one of the bottles that blows you away, right? The, the altitude gin, um, when you open the box, it's like, wow, look at that bottle. But I've got to admit, it does look very nice. And the fact that it's got such a nice of elderflower, camel and lemon verbena, um, it means Craft Gin Club have gone just slightly deviated away from the traditional sort of London dry gin, which they, they normally sort of promote within the um, the boxes that they supply to people. Um, it should be very nice. As I say, it is a limited edition. Um, check out their website. I've had a quick look and their normal bottles retail for 40 quid. So if you've either got the £20 box or you've got discount off one you've had a bit of a bargain um so i shall look forward to trying that um particularly probably with the uh apple and rhubarb excuse me for a the last thing in the drop is the usual the wonderful ginger magazine my favorite um from what i can gather the gin itself is is mr Schofield. Um, and it's all the sort of usual recipes and different drinks that you can have. Um, some bits about the, the actual gin itself again, the history of it. Um, there you go. So from what I can gather, um, it's a, a lot. Some of the botanicals are again from the local hillside, and some are from all around the world. Um, Okay, very nice magazine, and um, I'll, it certainly will give me some some bedtime reading before I go to bed. So, what do I think of the box? The box itself is very nice this month. Um, again, it's not a blow you away box, and it's you certainly got a lot for the money that you wanted. Um, I guess the, the it's all going to be in the taste of the gin to see what that's like. Um, but I have liked these sustainable products. That for me is a big plus plus, particularly for the craft gin club to be promoting stuff like that. I think that's a very good idea, especially in this sort of decade or decade and the times that we live in of throwing stuff away and everything coming in uh, pre-packaged plastic containers, um, which hopefully we're all recycling and doing a little bit for the environment with. Um, I just wanted to, bear with me one second. I wanted to review the this gin. Now, this was last month's. Um, as you can see, that's some of it. It was a nice gin. It was very, very smooth. Um, it certainly, uh, with, with the cocktails, um, it was very nice. And would I buy it again or pay £40 a bottle? Mm, probably not. Um, I, I know it's from an independent small distillery and obviously... Um, that pushes the price up a bit, um, but it was it's very nice, and I'm so glad I bought it uh, from Craft Gin, and um, it's certainly one that I would recommend if I saw it. I'm certainly have it in if I was out with friends in a local pub, or whatever. So all that remains is to try the Ludlow. Well done, Craft Gin Club. Um, hopefully, it's going to be a successful box. And, um, yeah, um, I'm guessing next month it's going to be an Easter-style review. Uh, being said, Easter's obviously in, in April. Um, they might even put chocolate egg in it. Fingers crossed. Oh, I'm just as happy with Cadbury's Green Eggs as they do me. But, um, yeah, I'll see you next month. Um, what I'm probably going to start doing, I think, is doing a few reviews of ale as well, um, as well as the gin. Um, I'm a big fan of ales, like I said last time. 
Um, I could still continue to do these, so that's, that's not a thing, but I thought I'd do a, ref a review of a few different kinds of ale um, and have a, have a little sample of it, just small videos, nothing big, um, and uh, get people interested in real ales as well. But for now, thank you very much to all my new subscribers. Um, it's been... Uh, I've gained about eight or nine new subscribers within the month, so I'm very happy with that. Um, anyway, I hope I haven't spoke the, the gym for you, and um, I shall see you next month with next month's box, and I might even do a little review of what the Ludlow gym was like. Hopefully it's a, a nice one, and um, I shall let you know. So take care for now, and I'll see you later. Have a wonderful Mother's Day to all the mums out there and um, see you next month. Bye for now.